This video focuses on the commissioning of solar PV SSEG systems in municipal networks. But first, some background on SSEG. There is a growing trend around South Africa for customers to install small generators such as photovoltaic or PV systems on their properties. These generators are typically connected to the grid behind the meter, making them embedded and less than 1 megawatt making them small. Hence the term Small Scale Embedded Generation or SSEG. As of the middle of 2020, it is estimated that there were tens of thousands of such small systems in place amongst municipal distributors, totaling at least 400 megawatts and these numbers are growing steadily. The increasing presence of SCCG on networks is a reality that all municipal distributors have to adjust to. When a customer wants to install SCG on their property, the first step is to submit their application to the municipality. This application would incorporate all the necessary supporting documents as stated in the municipal SSEG requirements. So let's look at a typical set of handover documentation that typically goes to the customer but it should also be submitted to the municipality. So the first document that we have here is the municipal application form. So in the application form, we see the specific municipality, its application form and all the relevant details for this uh, application. With this, we have the commission report and the commission report covers the details about the installation, the installer details, and we also see that the relevant documentation has been added, as well as the tests, which we will show in, in this video. In addition to this, we have the professional person, or this in this case, a competent person, signing off on the commissioning in this case, we don't have a PV green card person, but a professional engineer registered with EXA signing off. We also need to have the single line diagrams. So for the single line diagrams, you see that we've got the diagrams for the PV, the inverts and the AC connection, the communication, and also a drawing to show out how the PV is installed. Other documentation that should be included is the certificate of compliance of um, the inverter, this is just to say that the inverter itself is compliant to the NRS 097-2-1 and another document actually is also the certificate of compliance of the installation itself. And this is the COC issued by the registered electrician for the electrical installation of the SEG. And those are the key documents. After receiving a satisfactory application, the municipality then provides a signed off pre-approval letter with specific requirements. Only then can the SCG system be installed. And once installed, the system needs to go through a commissioning process, which we will discuss now. This video will focus on the commissioning process and will highlight 1. The importance of commissioning 2. The municipality's role in this process 3. Who can commission the system? 4. The different steps and tests in the commissioning process. And finally, where to obtain further support. So, let's get started. The importance of a commissioning is to ensure 1. The SECG systems are safe, compliant and well functioning. Secondly, that the network operator protects the network, its users and the environment. So the question is, what role does a municipality have in the commissioning process? First of all, it is important to note that all SSEG systems need to comply with the NRS 097-2-1 specification. This certification covers technical issues around safety and power quality. So there is nothing that actually requires the municipality to be present or conduct commissioning tests. Some municipalities, however, choose to participate in such tests of a few installations for additional assurance and safety aspects. This provides them with the opportunity to familiarize themselves with the commissioning process and double check system compliance through observing the tests undertaken. It is important to note that municipalities should not perform the commissioning test themselves. At most, municipalities can observe and validate the commissioning. 
It's the customer's or the installer's responsibility to implement the actual commissioning tests. The most important role a municipality has is to check that the commissioning report has been filled out correctly and that it has been signed off by the designated person. So, who should this designated person be? Every single SCCG system must be commissioned by a registered or competent person. This registered or competent person can be a Department of Labour registered electrician with an industry accreditation or an Engineering Council of South Africa registered professional. Some municipalities insist on a registered professional person, while others allow industry accredited registered electricians. Either of these are legally sound. In addition to SSEG commissioning, all electrical installation, including SSEG wiring, requires a Certificate of Compliance or COC to be issued by a registered installation electrician. It is important to note that a standard is being developed to cover this entire sign-off process, which is called or referred to as the SANS 10142 Part 1 Section 2. Once this document is finalized and released, a registered electrician who has been trained accordingly will be able to sign off all aspects of the installation. Alright, so let's move on to the commissioning steps. So there are four key inspections and tests that are carried out during a commissioning. These tests can either be done at the main AC circuit breaker of the SCCG installation or at the main AC breaker at the point of supply or control. So let's go to an SCG site and see how to perform these commissioning tests. The first test is anti-islanding test. The anti-islanding test is to ensure the SCG system switches off when the grid is off. The second test is the reconnection time test. This is to make sure the SCG system does not switch on too quickly when the grid comes back on. But the third test is an optional reconnection dummy test where we make sure the SCCG system does frequently check that the grid is actually there. And the final check is to make sure that the correct labels are installed at the SCG system and at the point of supply. So to do the commissioning test, we first actually need to make sure the SCCG system is actually running and producing power. Now to do that, we need to measure both the voltage and the current at the main AC circuit breaker of the SCG. To measure the voltage, while the system is up and running and connected, we may need to measure between phase and neutral. We would be able to measure the voltage value of 230. If we measure between the two phases, we will be able to measure the 400 volts, which shows that the system is connected. And to confirm that the system is producing power, we need to measure the current. For that, we should switch over to current And the current that you're measuring here is actually the SECG system injecting power into the local grid. So this current value is an indication that the system is not just on, but actually producing power and synchronized to the grid. So after we verify that the SECG system is actually operating and producing power, we need to do the first commissioning test, which is the anti-islanding test. Now to do the anti-islanding test, we need to switch a grid failure and to achieve that, we switch off the main AC circuit breaker of the system. Now that the grid is off, the SECG system should not produce any power, no voltage, no current. And to verify that, we're going to measure both. As you can see, the voltage value is close to zero or zero volts, which means there's no supply coming from the SCG. And if we were to measure the current, We can also see that there's no current value, which indicates the SCG system is not producing any power and it actually passed the anti-islanding test. The second test after the anti-islanding test is the reconnection time test. In essence, we need to make sure the SCG does not switch on too quickly when the grid is off. Now the NRIS 097-2-1 stipulates that it needs to only switch on after 60 seconds. So we need a stopwatch or something like a cell phone so that you can measure the time. So after I'm switching on, I'm going to start the stopwatch and, it, and as soon as it goes beyond 60 seconds, 
it passes the reconnection time. Okay, so we've achieved the 60 second mark. We can see on the amount of current that's being measured that there's no current that's being supplied and it passes the reconnection time test. After we've done the reconnection test, there's an optional reconnection time dummy test. And this is where we switch on the ESCOM supply for a few seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, and then we switch it off. This is to make sure the inverter does not start to produce power, but actually continually check if the grid is there, so that if the grid falls away, it will immediately switch off and not produce any power. So let's start with the test. We switch on the main AC supply, and we wait about 10 to 15 seconds. After about 10 to 15 seconds, we switch off again, and we measure both the current and especially the voltage to make sure that there's no power supply coming from the SCG. But we have to wait about 60 seconds to make sure the SCG does not switch on for whatever reason. It's 60 seconds later and we can see that there's no voltage and no current. So the SCG system passed the dummy test. Okay, so We've done all the physical tests for the SSG system and we've seen that the system has passed the tests. So the final thing that we need to look at is, is the labels for SSEG. This is to inform the customer, installer, the future users that there's an embedded generator installed on the premises. This label needs to be at the SSG system itself and ideally also at the kiosk or the point of supply. So as you can see, we do have an on-site embedded generator system connected and the label indicated here. In addition to the actual SCCG installation, we can also check at the main DB board or at the point of supply to see that there's also a label indicated. This makes it easier for the utility and for the installers to be aware that there is an embedded generator installed on the premises. So let's have a look. Here we see here's the circuit breaker with the PV infeed and again, the label indicated that there's an embedded generator installed on the premises. Okay, and that was the commissioning tests. If it so happens that you do all of these tests and one of these tests fail, do not switch on or keep the SCG on. Switch it off and ask the customer or the installer to fix the issues before you redo the commissioning tests. And that is the commissioning of an SCG system. Here you can see a commissioning form showing where the test results should be recorded and where the sign-off should take place. If this form is in order, a municipal distributor can feel comfortable giving permission for the SCG to generate power onto the grid. Great, so as we have seen in this video, it is essential that robust commissioning tests are conducted for SSEG systems. Whilst municipal officials do not need to perform commissioning tests themselves, it is essential that a registered or competent person is designated to do so and that a comprehensive commissioning report is submitted to the municipality. Template commissioning reports and many other municipal SSEG support resources can be found at www.sseg.org.za.